I am Susan Corbin, and I am director of the Michigan Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity. I think the key word in that question is authentic. Um, I know for myself, it's very difficult for me when I can't be authentic. I think that um, we need to be authentic in how we lead. Um, we need to lead in a way that's comfortable for us and not to lead in a way that we're modeling ourselves after something that we think might be a success after somebody who's maybe successfully led. led. Um, you know, we need to be leading in, in ways that are very authentic to us. And I think that that um, basically comes down to how we communicate and how we um, how we carry ourselves when we're working with other people. Well, you know, there's always the, the advice about, um, you know, getting engaged and staying involved. I know uh, that in my career really opened up doors for me and opened up opportunities for me. I uh, started my career in state government, but I took some time off in the middle of my career to uh, raise my children. You know, I took 12 years uh, away from my career while I was raising my children. But during that period, uh, I, st I tried to stay engaged. I tried to uh, have adult activities. Um, you know, I was in involved in my children's school, supporting, you know, the activities that were important to us as a family. I also served on my uh, local school board for a couple of terms. And I stayed active in local politics, uh, you know, staying involved and engaged in politics and, you know, meeting our elected officials is something that uh, was very, very helpful to me as I returned uh, to the workplace. I had worked on, uh, you know, campaigns for Senator Stabenow and campaigns for Governor Granholm. And uh, by being um, committed and engaged with uh, women leaders, it opened up opportunities for me. Well, um, I've been telling this story a lot. Um, my father, growing up, my father was a minister in a local church, and the church was just north of Flint. And so you can imagine that a lot of people who attended that church were people who worked in, who worked in the Buick plant in Flint. You know, they were people who had factory jobs where they were getting up early in the morning. Um, they maybe were working later shifts. And he recognized then, um, back in the 70s, that childcare was an issue. And so he opened up a daycare center in our church. Um, he didn't think that it was right for a church to set empty, you know, all week long, that, that it should be used by the community. So he saw a need and he opened a daycare center. So I was thinking about that and it's 50 years later and we still have not solved the issue of childcare in our society. Childcare was an issue going into the pandemic. Um, it's so unaffor unaffordable for so many families. Um, there are parts of our state before the pandemic where families did not have access to quality, affordable daycare. And that situation has only been exacerbated by this public health crisis. So first and foremost, unfortunately, we still are working on issues around childcare. But I do think that we are in a positive moment because of the fact that women were so disproportionately impacted by the public health crisis. More women left the workforce, and in Michigan, we still have 230,000 women who've not yet had an opportunity to return to the workforce. So um, the issue of childcare is on everybody's uh, mind. You know, it's on us as uh, state leaders. It's obviously on the minds of um, Michigan households, but it's on the mind of our employers, and business leaders, and it's on the mind of our elected officials. So I'm hopeful that with this synergy and with everybody realizing how critical this issue is and that we, we need to solve it, we need to get it right now, that we will see uh, some some really positive uh, action in the area of solving 
childcare for Michigan households.